Chilkin, my dear fellow. Good evening, Lord Caversham. Uh, good evening, Lady Markby. I hope you've brought Sir John with you. Oh, I brought a much more charming person than Sir John. Sir John's temper, since he's taken seriously to politics, has become quite unbearable. Really, now that the House of Commons is trying to become useful, it does a great deal of harm. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> At any rate, we do our best to waste the public time, don't we? <laughs> but who is this charming person you've been kind enough to bring to us? Her name is Mrs Cheveley. One of the Dorsetshire Cheveleys, I suppose. But I really don't know. Families are so mixed nowadays. Indeed, as a rule, everybody turns out to be somebody else. <laughs> Mrs. Cheveley, I, I seem to know the name. She has just arrived from Vienna. Ah, yes, I, I think I know whom you mean. Oh, she goes everywhere there and has such pleasant scandals about all her friends. I really must go to Vienna next winter. I hope there's a good chef at the embassy. If there is not, the ambassador will certainly have to be recalled. Pray point out, Mrs. Cheveley, to me. Let me introduce you. My dear, Sir Robert Chilton is dying to know you. Everyone is dying to know the brilliant Mrs. Cheveley. Our attache is at Vienna right to about nothing else. Oh, thank you, Sir Robert. An acquaintance that begins with a compliment is sure to develop into a real friendship. It starts in the right manner. And I find that I know Lady Children already. Really? Yes, she's just reminded me that we were at school together. I remember it perfectly now. She always got the Good Conduct Prize. I have a distinct recollection of Lady Chilton always getting the Good Conduct Prize. And what prizes did you get, Mrs. Chibnall? Oh, well, my prizes came a little later on in life. I don't think any of them were for Good Conduct, I forget. I am sure they were for something charming. I don't know that women are always rewarded for being charming. I think they're usually punished for it. Certainly more women grow old nowadays through the faithfulness of their admirers than through anything else. At least that is the only way I can account for the terribly haggard look of most of your pretty women in London. <laughs> what an appalling philosophy that sounds. But do sit down. Uh, and now tell me, what, what makes you leave your brilliant Vienna for our gloomy London? Or perhaps the question is indiscreet. Oh, questions are never indiscreet. Answers sometimes are. Well, at any rate, may I know if it is politics or pleasure? Oh, politics are my only pleasure. You see, nowadays it is not fashionable to flirt until one is 40. Or to be romantic until one is 45. So we poor women who are under 30, oh, say we are, have nothing open to us but politics or philanthropy. And philanthropy seems to me to have become simply the refuge of people who wish to annoy their fellow creatures. <laughs> I prefer politics. I think they are more becoming. A political life is a noble career. Sometimes. And sometimes it is a clever game, Sir Robert. And sometimes it is a great nuisance. Which do you find it? I... A combination of all three. <laughs> but you've not told me yet what makes you honour London so suddenly. Our season is almost over. Oh, I don't care about the London season. It is too matrimonial. People are either hunting for husbands or hiding from them. I wanted to meet you. It is quite true. You know what a woman's curiosity is. Almost as great as a man's. I wanted immensely to meet you and to ask you to do something for me. I hope it is not a little thing, Mrs. Cheveley. I find that little things are so very difficult to do. 